tonight, the damning report that reveals the frightening realisation that children in care may still be at risk. There can be no doubt that physical and sexual abuse and emotional neglect were suffered by children in the care of Jersey. The consequences for children in care were often devastating and in many instances lifelong. We hear from the survivors and the people who've made sure their voices were heard. A life sentence, that's what I've got. And the people that are worse off than me, that's what they've got. And some of them aren't here anymore because they took their own lives. And a recommendation that Hoda Lagarin should be demolished. Good evening. In care and still at risk. Tonight, the findings of the independent Jersey Care Inquiry into historic abuse reports that it believes children remain at risk in care and elements of children's services are still not fit for purpose. The states of Jersey are described as ineffectual and neglectful substitute parents as a catalogue of failures in child care affecting thousands of youngsters and spanning decades are highlighted. The report was delivered by Frances Oldham QC at three o'clock this afternoon. She said the panel had no doubt with the large amount of evidence that physical and sexual abuse and emotional neglect was suffered by children in state's care. The level of oversight of children's homes was inadequate with a failure to implement laws to protect children and allegations of abuse were not adequately dealt with and an avoidance of staff to take responsibility for protecting the children. The inquiry sat for 149 days hearing evidence from hundreds of people including those who suffered abuse in care, politicians and staff who worked in the state's run care system. The inquiry costs are almost £23 million. The chairwoman of the panel, Frances Oldham QC, always promised a robust inquiry. Today was her first public comment of the findings. Over many decades, there were persistent failures in the governance, management and operation of children's homes in Jersey. Failings were at all levels. There was no political interest in promoting standards of care and performance in residential care and no will to invest the resources required in the child care service. The consequences for children in care were often devastating and in many instances lifelong. In the last hour, the state of Jersey have been giving their reaction to the report in a news conference from Jersey Archive where we can join our reporter Claire Burton. Claire, in a moment we'll get that political reaction, but first let's focus on that report from the Independent Care Inquiry. You were one of the first to read it, no major surprises, but still a damning reflection of the care of vulnerable youngsters. Well, yes, Charlie, the executive summary which was released today runs to some 60 plus pages. The full report, apparently three hefty volumes, it'll be a lot of detail to comb over in the days to come. But the headlines very much failings in the history of children's services and the care system in Jersey, failings in the management of various children's homes, failings in the government departments that were meant to be overseeing them, failings in the very culture of this island, which has failed to prioritise child welfare needs. Jersey described as lagging behind other developed countries when it came to developing policy in child protection. It's things that people have long suspected. Today, it was confirmed. It's the moment they've waited for for years. In some cases, decades. Survivors of abuse in Jersey's care system, along with lawyers, politicians, care workers and more, arrive to see the finished report. Tensions running high. Painful memories will have been stirred. Survivors will be thinking back to the past, which will be very difficult for them and they will be looking for some good to come out of today. The inquiry heard evidence of abuse and mismanagement at nearly all states and non-state care homes since 1940. But it was Odla Garen, the former Jersey home for boys, whose Victorian frontage became a sinister symbol for child abuse. It was dubbed Jersey's House of Horrors by the UK tabloids. The panel today 
said it should be demolished. Well, this is the executive summary of the full report, and it does speak about excessive punishments at Eau at the hands, though, of badly trained staff. At the Blanche Pierre home, it talks about a culture where children were terrorised and abused with little scrutiny. And at the Sacre Coeur orphanage, a harsh and strict regime, again, with little or no supervision, all the historic failings on the part of the Jersey authorities to oversee the care system. But worryingly, the report also points to failings in the system today, with foster carers telling the inquiry the service is failing our children and leaves them vulnerable. Francis Oldham QC, a deputy High Court judge from the UK, led this inquiry. Today, she made a number of recommendations. A commissioner for children to ensure independent oversight of the interests of children and young people in Jersey. In order to achieve and maintain public confidence in this work, the commissioner must be and be seen to be independent. We recommend that Jersey establish a truly independent inspection arrangements for its children's services, which will have the confidence of children, staff and the wider public. Legislation for children in Jersey has lagged behind the developed world. We have set out suggestions for Jersey keeping pace with other jurisdictions, including developing collaborations with English authorities. But is it enough for survivors of the care system and campaigners for them who've waited so long for their voices to be heard. Certainly the victims and survivors have been totally and utterly vindicated today. Totally. They've been believed, they've been listened to. I'm happy with the way that the board have come up, you know, sort of the... It's just, I don't know, it's still the Jersey way and I don't know. That's what worries me. The report correctly identifies the catastrophic failure to protect children in Jersey. It actually fails in fact, to address the real cause of how that was able to happen, which is a fundamental breakdown in the checks and balances in Jersey. One, it was thoroughly put together, and it was damning. And it's been damning of the states from 1945 almost to the present time. It'll take survivors time to fully digest this report, which makes clear that the states of Jersey failed to protect them. It may take the public longer to trust that things will change. Well, producing this report has cost in the region of £23 million because the lawyers and facilities needed don't come cheap, certainly. And the man that pushed for that inquiry and pushed for the resources to make it happen is our Chief Minister, Ian Gorst. Uh, Senator Gorst, first of all, um, your initial reaction to today's findings. Well, my first uh, sentiment is one of sadness. Uh, and I'm sorry for those who suffered abuse over decades at the hands of Jersey institutions. It was really important that we had this independent public inquiry so that islanders can understand what happened to some most vulnerable people in our community over these decades and then commit ourselves to delivering on the recommendations of this report. There are a number of recommendations, aren't there? And I understand there's a state sitting this week. Will we see decisions on those come as quickly as that? We, later this week, uh, will have a debate in our uh, parliament which will, which will consider the recommendations, we will probably consider some of the detailed findings. I today have already committed myself to delivering those recommendations, but I ask every member of the states, I ask every member of our community to read those stories, uh, the stories of those who suffered humiliating abuse, uh, abuse uh, which really pulls at one's heartstrings. Having read them, I believe that every islander, every member of the states, will commit themselves to delivering those recommendations. It will, of course, time, take uh, time. Uh, the states will be rising for its summer recess, but we need to commit resources, we need to commit people, and we need to continue to involve independent experts to helping us redesigning our services for the future. Is it embarrassing to see Jersey described as lagging behind the rest of the developed world when it comes to child protection, and how do you rectify that? I have known uh, since I became Chief Minister that we needed to prioritise, and we have prioritised, social legislation, uh, mental health, transforming the health service. Uh, but we've got much more uh, to do, and we commit ourselves to doing that. 
we need to learn from elsewhere in the world, as the report rightly says, and we've been doing that whilst the report has been written. We've had independent audits of children's services. We've now recruited uh, heads of services from the United Kingdom. But I hope also that others will learn from our experience in this report about ch how children's services and social services elsewhere can be improved. We've had problems of unity in the states of Jersey, though, recently, your own position under threat recently. Do you think you can get that unity to push for the changes that are recommended here? I absolutely do. We've got to look beyond uh, political divisions, look beyond personality, read those stories, hear the abuse that people suffered, and then we must commit ourselves, not only as a parliament, as the states, but as an island, to doing better. Any child being abused is one child too many. Senator Gorse, for now, thank you very much. Well, what have, uh, survivors of abuse, as Falong said, they've just wanted their voices to be heard. It'll take a lot of time to see whether this report will turn into legislation and policy. But for now, their voices have been heard and they will form a permanent archive here at the Jersey Archive. From here for now, though, Charlie, back to you. Claire, for the time being, thank you. Now, the inquiry heard horrific stories of sexual, physical and emotional abuse, all carried out by people who should have been caring for children, not hurting them. Mike Weir has been to meet two of the survivors who wanted to tell their story. Now, they may have been cared for in decades separated by some 40 years, but their stories are remarkably similar. When was the last time you were here? Huh? <laughs> the last time was when I left. <laughs> In 1951. In 1951, yeah. Mm. Gifford Oban was a young child when he was sent to Hodela Garen during World War II. To this day, he has no idea why he was sent there. After after the uh, war, I should have gone back with my parents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and this never happened. You know, because I mean, um, for me, uh, liberation would have been away from here. Let's go home. You know, back back to your parents, you know, because mm -hmm. they were still then living in the, in the village. But Gifford didn't make the half mile journey home after liberation. In fact, it would be another six years before Gifford was allowed to leave Hodelagaren and Jersey's care system. In that time, he was mentally put down, his meals would be withheld, and he had physical torture, which came in various forms. Putting these wires on your legs, that sort of thing, you know, and also... These were live electrical wires. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah, and also hitting you with... Um, a pre-war army stick, you know, like a, you know, uh, look at where Sergeant Major and Officer would have, but they had a metal end on the end, so you can imagine how that cut into you. Gifford was the first person to give evidence at the care inquiry, his time here still casting a shadow. Two decades later, Jackie needed the help of Jersey's care system. Instead of support, she received cruelty and punishment. I can't keep quiet anymore. I want to make sure that they don't just try and brush everything under the carpet again. The people that did all these things that were wrong, whether it was to me or anybody else, they need to pay for it. And I don't want to see them get sort of community service or a year in jail or whatever. A life sentence, that's what I've got. And the people that are worse off than me, that's what they've got. And some of them aren't here anymore because they took their own lives, because they couldn't cope with what went on. How confident are you that it'll, it'll sort of achieve what it's set out to do? Not at all. Why is that? Because it's Jersey. Jackie Delahaye and Gifford Oban telling our reporter Mike Weir about their experiences at Ho de la Garen. Similar stories sadly repeated time and time again by scores of different witnesses all supposed to be in state's care. Carrie Modrell is also one of the survivors. She set up the Care Leaves Association and helped give many a voice when they felt no one was listening. Many, many have committed suicide. Some have lost their children because they became the abuser or because they couldn't cope. And um, some have ended up on the streets um, because they can't get into a home life, a family life, through no fault of their own. They haven't been able to integrate with society. They, they were failing um, in life because of the abuse that they suffered as children. And I wanted to help build up their strength, 
the police, the government, the law officer department. I just got the impression they wanted it to go away. They want the world to know what happened to them as children, and they've achieved that now. So um, they've not had justice through the courts, but they have had some form of justice through being able to give their story. The worst thing that could have happened was this to have been suppressed again. It would not have gone away. It would have been raised again in another 10 years' time. I want them to say that Jersey failed catastrophically in looking after the children under their care and that the government are going to promise that it's never going to happen again. Some care leavers haven't come forward still because they're so traumatised and I can understand that and I wish they would come forward if only just to get some sort of counselling rather than suffering in their own, on their own. Um, but for some, they will, that this will never go away, no matter what you do. The testimonies of survivors have been vital to this inquiry, but as you heard there from Carrie Modrell, many more may not have come forward. Alan Collins has represented many of the survivors during this inquiry, and he joins me now live from the Jersey Archive. Alan, speaking on behalf of the survivors, has this report delivered for them? I believe it has. It's a very comprehensive report and whilst the content is shocking and damning, the report needed to say what it needed to say and I would hope that survivors have gained some satisfaction after all these years by, by the report being published today and the report's findings. For you, Alan, what are the standout statements that you take from the report? Well, number one is the fact that there has been a failure at all levels of government and management that goes back years, if not decades, and that there is, which would be my second point, an ongoing issue when it comes to child protection in Jersey. My third point would be is the recommendations and the fact that the recommendations made in the report crying, are cry out for action needs to be taken now, not next year, but now. And fourthly, I think the idea of an appointment of a children's commissioner is an absolute must. And the sooner that appointment is made, the better, because Jersey deserves that its children are at the centre of um, societal life, so to speak, and that children's welfare no longer remains a secondary consideration, but becomes a primary consideration. And I believe that if you have a children's commissioner in place, that will enable Jersey's lawmakers and policy makers to ensure that they put children's welfare and child protection centre stage where it deserves to be. And Jersey deserves that. Jersey deserves to have a child welfare system that is fit for the 21st century. Do, do you think this will lead to more support and help for the survivors, the survivors you represented? Well, yes. Um, I, I, if the Jersey and its lawmakers and leaders embrace the report, there is now greater recognition of the needs of survivors. And, of course, they are not going to go away. And whether we like it or not, child abuse is not going to go away overnight either. And so there are patent needs that need to be um, addressed. There are ongoing needs that need to be addressed. And it's going to be incumbent upon Jersey, and in particular its um, lawmakers and policy makers, to ensure that today's survivors get the help and support that they need. It is a pressing issue. I'm only too aware of that myself because of the people that I represent and I hear about their concerns and their difficulties and their problems on a regular basis. Frances Oldham promised a clear and robust inquiry, so has she delivered? I believe so. The report is very comprehensive. It pulls no punches, in my opinion, and Jersey needs to read the report. We've heard from the Chief Minister earlier uh, um, encouraging everybody to read the report, and he's absolutely right about that. But I would go one step further and say that Jersey's leaders not only just need to read the report, they need, with a degree of urgency, think about how they are going to change things to ensure that the laws and policies that govern ch children, children's welfare and child protection are going to be fit for the 21st century. That Alan is the big challenge and that's the challenge that they've got to meet on. Alan Collins, thank you very much. Clearly an important day in Jersey and we'll return to the Care Inquiry report shortly. But first, 
In other news, a man has appeared in court facing a charge of raping a 17-year-old woman last October. Paolo Adelino Pestana Ferreira, who's 21 and from St Martin, denies rape and four charges of indecent assault. The court was told he had preyed on the victim's intoxicated state while he was sober. The trial continues. Teachers at Le Beaucamp High School in Guernsey are to go on strike next week. The teaching union, the NASUWT, says the action is set for next Tuesday and Thursday. It says it's in relation to management practices. The union also says that with more than a week to go, it still hopes strike action can be avoided. The BBC has approached the state's education committee for a response. After three months, the crew of the St Helier lifeboat and their coxswain, Andy Hibbs, are back at the helm. Mr Hibbs was sacked in April after allegedly breaching the organisation's code of conduct, but he appealed against the decision. The long-serving skipper's dismissal prompted his entire crew to walk out in protest and sparked public demonstrations. Last week, the RNLI issued a full apology to Mr Hibbs and reinstated him with immediate effect. Work has begun today to increase the height of the seawall at the gun site in Jersey after repeated flooding. High spring tides and storms have caused problems for motorists and local residents. And this project, which raises a 200 metre section by, of the wall by 30 centimetres, could offer some protection. The work will take 14 weeks. We think this is probably the start. This is the first time I can recall in my 30 odd years that we've actually raised the seawall. And I think as we look forward to sea level rises and climate change, I believe this is probably what we're likely to be doing in certain other areas. But we don't know yet, we don't know where yet that analysis is being done or will be done later on in the next year or two. The Jersey offshore sailor Phil Sharp has set off on his latest race from France to the Azores. The two and a half thousand mile race is expected to take Team Imri six days and a win would strengthen their position at the top of the Class 40 championship. So far, it's been a great season with the Jersey based team winning all their races. The forecast is saying that it could take anything between five and seven days, um, but I think we're probably going to be around six days. So hopefully we can, uh, you know, our, our objective is really to be the first into the, into the bar in the Azores. Uh, on Saturday night. Guernsey's tennis star Heather Watson defends her Wimbledon title today. She was the mixed doubles champion last year. Heather's currently ranked outside the top 100 in the world. She was given a wild card to compete at Wimbledon, as was Jersey Scott Clayton. He'll be the first Jerseyman to play at the world famous tournament when he plays in the men's doubles later in the week. Now in a moment, we'll return to the care inquiry. But first, now let's take a look at the latest weather forecast. Here's David Brain. Thank you, Charlie. Hello, good evening. I think we've got a pretty warm week ahead of us, but we're just going to briefly look back at June because we've had the second warmest June on record. The average temperature for Jersey, 18 degrees through the month of, the month of June. And this month is also going to start off pretty warm as well. I think for tomorrow, fine and dry with some sunshine after the low cloud has cleared away. And it's going to get warmer each day this week with probably a peak temperature on Thursday. Most of the weather action is passing to the north of us. This weather front will drift up towards Ireland, the western side of Scotland. So at the moment we've got an area of high pressure. That's going to be with us tonight and tomorrow, keeping things settled and quiet. But eventually an area of low pressure across the western side of Spain and Portugal will develop and move northwards. Now that is slow in terms of its speed of movement. So even by Wednesday, it's not with us. But I think overnight and into the early hours of Thursday morning, we could start to see that area of low pressure develop over us. Lots of warmth and humidity trapped in it. The potential early on Thursday of a thunderstorm as well. But at the moment, it's relatively quiet. I think after the clear skies of this evening, there'll be some low cloud developing and some mist forming later in the night. Uh, relatively still air at the moment. And overnight temperatures probably down to around 14 or 15 degrees. Tomorrow morning, it is a bit grey to start with, but quite quickly, I think, by the middle of the morning, some breaks in the cloud, certainly by lunchtime, a good deal of sunshine, to end with a fine afternoon and a warm one too. Island temperatures around the coast, 18, 19, but inland 20, possibly even 21 degrees as the maximum temperature. There's our times of high water for our ports and harbours and for our surfers. Clean, but not very big, the waves, maybe one or two feet at best with the coastal waters forecast eventually becoming north or northeasterly, but light and variable in the morning 
and then picking up to a force three to four. Some heat developing Wednesday, 24, 25 degrees, Thursday, 27 degrees, but also the risk of a thunderstorm and slightly cooler and fresher by Friday. Have a nice evening. Let's return to Claire now at the Jersey Air Car. And uh, Claire, the repercussions of this report will be felt for weeks, months, even years. Well, yes, Charlie, of course, thoughts immediately turn to the political response and what happens next. And we're going to bring in BBC Radio Jersey's political reporter, Chris Rayner. Chris, what does happen next? The states are sitting this week, aren't they? They are. I think publicly we'll hear a little bit more this week. We've only had a rushed statement from the Chief Minister, as you can imagine, just having seen the report for the first time this afternoon. Tomorrow he'll make a statement in the um, States Assembly during question time. He'll be questioned on that as well. And he'll also make another statement on Thursday. He'll have had more chance, really, to talk and think through the recommendations, although he said today in the press conference just now that he accepts all the recommendations or later the recommend recommendations from the Care Inquiry report. Those were his personal thoughts. He's now got to persuade other members uh, of the government to go with it, of course. Uh, but this week we'll hear a lot about that. Later this week, Thursday, Friday, there's an in-committee debate in the States Assembly. But we won't hear very much until, much more, until October. That's when they'll reveal what they're going to do, how they're going to roll out those recommendations and answer those properly as a government and also come forward with their children's plan for next year. Chris, thank you very much. Well, the political considerations very much for the days. Weeks and months ahead. Uh, tonight, thoughts really with survivors of abuse in the care system, whose bravery in coming forward has made this report possible. Charlie. Claire, thank you very much. Well, that is your news this Monday evening in the Channel Islands. Tomorrow morning, there'll be continued coverage and analysis of the Care Inquiry report on BBC Radio Jersey from 6. The BBC will also be broadcasting this week's state sitting on 1026 medium wave, also online at bbc.co.uk slash jersey. I'm back at 8 with an update, and then, of course, your late news at 10.30. Until then, good evening. I used to be woken up some nights with screaming from the boys. They put death hole in my mouth. He hung himself. He was only 14. Don't say anything to anybody. I want them to say that Jersey failed catastrophically in looking after the children under their care. I'd have given anything not to have been in there, not to have been assaulted when I was younger, you know. And, and it stays with you, it never goes away. The consequences for children in care were often devastating and in many instances lifelong.